Okay, now, now here we go. Got it, okay. So we are going to uh, jump over to the Noor Pond open space area. And of course that is just um, below the Cypress Street Bridge and on the east side of the river. Uh, we recently renamed it Noor Pond, which is a Wintu name for translated as Salmon Run. Uh, that was an intentional uh, effort for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, we have not done a good job in this community honoring our Native American history uh, and heritage. And uh, frankly, we're hoping that we are sort of, um, you know, re introducing this area to the community in a different way than they've known it. And we thought a new name uh, would go along with that. And so um, just uh, creating that together. So we did consult with uh, the Reading Rancheria, uh, Jack Potter Jr. specifically, and toured the area with him. And that was the name that he suggested. And the city council adopted that as its new official name uh, a few months back. So. I'm gonna just uh, start with a, I'm gonna see if I can share my screen here. All right, can you all see that? Oops. Okay. A lot of us have really slow internet. So okay. uh, yeah, it took a few seconds for that to show for me. Do you see it now? Oh yeah. Okay, so this is a, I think an important um, starter and it's a parcel map of the area. Um, so the city owns um, the, the land that is not shaded um, and the yellow area is the land that was acquired by Dignity Health uh, a few years back. They are planning uh, a medical complex of sorts. Um, we've not seen those specific plans yet. Um, and then the purple shaded area is um, privately owned by the Beeman Family Trust. Uh, they have lineage to the Thatcher Mill, um, which was a prior use of this uh, property. This um, is a really, this property, of course, it's in the very heart of the city, um, center of the city, and has a very unique and interesting history. And um, I'll show you some of the some of the relics uh, left on site, but um, it's been an important, um, uh, important feature of our civic life for a long time. And uh, we've been working to try to restore that to public use uh, the last few years. We have gotten about um, about $1 million in grant funds, as well as the cost of the bridges that I'll show you is about 1.4 million. And the cost of the channel project uh, was well over 3 million. So, you know, we have in excess of $5 million of um, investment in this area over the last few years. Um, I feel like this has been going on for 25 years, but it's more like 12, but it's been a, a work in progress. You know, initially we wanted to restore it similar and, it, and really Turtle Bay East is still sort of the model that I use for people of uh, a natural area with walking trails and kind of um, low impact. Um, and then when we were, we were just about ready to, hit go and we had the grants lined up and then Dignity approached the city about selling a portion of it. Um, I did not think that was a wise idea, but I got overruled. And so we sold them um, about the, um, the yellow piece um, closest um, to the purple piece on the river here that, that used to be city owned property and, and now it's not. Oh, um, but what it, what it did do was it took away our parking lots. And so we had to push the design a little closer to the river um, and, and actually go through a redesign that then pushed back the project again. And then as we were getting ready to go forward again, 
uh, the Bureau of Reclamation came and proposed the fish channel. Um, so we did think that was an interesting idea and something that would add value to the project, the overall experience um, of the of the area. And it's good for salmon. So we said, okay, well, we'll walk down this with you for a while. And then they did do a channel on the other side of Cypress Bridge, they call it the North Cypress, where the South Cypress, uh, that turned out really well and um, has actually had a really positive impact on the salmon. So we um, agreed to do that with the condition that they build two bridges. Uh, one at the north end of the project and one at the south end. So on this map over here, there's a green line that goes across and that is where the bridges are located. Those are the bridge locations. Um, and then also the blue here you can see, so there were, this is a, um, a former gravel mine, you know, pit operation. Uh, the gravel from this area was used to build Interstate 5. Um, and so this left these remnant um, ponds. And so the channel proposal um, proposed dredging the area between the ponds and out to the river so that we had uh, free flowing water um, from one end of the property to the other. So let me see if I can pull up another um, picture here for you. These are not in great order, but I'll just go with it. So this is um, the bridge at the south end. So they're both um, kind of natural looking bridges. Um, they have a natural patina to them um, and they cross over. And this, this water looks a little murky here because this was before the, the final piece of the, um, the dam was put through. So the water was um, fairly still here, but um, it isn't anymore. Um, so they're, they're attractive looking bridges. And I think what I think most people that come will enjoy is you get to look like right over them into the river. Um, when I was there for the Creek cleanup event, there was a giant salmon spawning like literally right off of the bridge. So Kim, uh -huh. I, I don't know if it's just my computer, but I'm still on the map. You're still on yeah. the map. Oh, okay, on. let's oh, see. Me too. Me too. Sharing, oh, sharing is paused. Okay, let's see here. Resume share. All right, but you probably just got my, let's see. How can I move this one? All right, are you seeing a picture now? No. Yep. Now, now I see you. Now I see me. Okay. Let's see. Let's try share screen. Do you have two screens going? I do. Nah. Now we there see we it. are. Now you see it. Okay. Um, so you Kim, can see that. Kim, That's what I mentioned. <laughs> Kim, yeah. Kim, would you rather take questions as we go or hold for the end? Um, I'm happy to take them as we go. Okay. Just just wondering. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, there you get a sense of this is the Southerly Bridge looking upstream. All right, I'm going to switch pictures again, so hopefully we can, we can do that a little bit better. Let's see, can you see that one? Yeah, that's the uh, bridge across. The culvert? From, yeah, there's a, uh, there's a uh, wood duck box right across from that. Okay, yeah, so what, we have two pedestrian bridges and one culvert. So this is an access out to the river. That has been there for a while, but this is kind of a more robust um, design. Um, and so again, we have, what's really nice about all this is that there is a lot of the river, the channel flows pretty well um, through these um, by having these different outlets uh, back out to the river. Okay, I'll do the next one. All right, can you see my friend Steve there? Yeah. Yep, okay, so 
Um, I'm sharing this because um, when we were going through the grant process, we really needed to show community collaboration and um, financial support. And so uh, Steve Woodrum offered up $50,000 um, and that really was significant in convincing the state that this wasn't just a, a staff driven project, but that it was important to the entire community. And uh, this is him out on a walk at uh, some point in the construction process, but he was a, a vital player in this project. All right, let's, can you see that pier there? Yeah, that's the old pier from okay. the old bridge. Old free bridge, right. So um, the, you know, the historic free bridge, which as I understand it, and some of you may know better, was really the first free crossing that you didn't have to pay a ferry toll to get across the river. And it crosses direct, you know, it, its alignment was directly into this property. And there are a number, there were a number of piers um, from the bridge platform. Uh, they've mostly been moved because the channel ended up going through or close to most of them, but we have repurposed them uh, to be the kind of the barrier along the driveway, uh, keeping you on the public property and off the private property. And we may even do some sort of mural or art piece along them. Um, but that's a, you know, so we have a, you know, we have the, the, um, Oh, I have one more I'll show you that and I'll tell you kind of the history there is. All right, do you see that one? Yes. Okay, so that is the uh, remnant of the first water wheel, which was the first real electric um, generation inside the city proper um, when the uh, city took over uh, the city's electrical grid system, which we this year marked 100 years of Reading Electric Utility. Uh, so the site has a lot of, I mean, it has the water. This is, part of this has crumbled, so you might not see it all now because it got a bit undermined with the, the channel. But um, so we have the, the water wheel, we have the three bridge piers, we have the gravel mining operation, we have um, the uh, sawmill operation, and, you know, undoubtedly there, there certainly was a Native American history, although it, this particular site is not, is not well documented. But um, so it is a, a very significant uh, and cultural site in our community. And so we're really excited to get people back out there. Um, what we are struggling with is uh, we've had, a, you know, for probably the last five years, a significant homeless camp. Um, occupying the site. And um, so we are working on a plan to help them with new location and also to create um, a plan to, we will likely be erecting some fencing. We're going to into a proposal to the city council to do that uh, in December. Um, so that we can secure the site overnight. So the site will be unlocked and opened um, during daytime hours, but then at night it would just like all the rest of our parks um, have a dawn to dusk operational period, which will allow us um, to then, you know, identify and move along people that uh, are there after closing hours. And then along with that is um, working with the city manager and the police chief on a park ranger proposal. So I'm really excited about that. We've been talking about, we've wanted park rangers for a long time. Um, and now our park system is just getting big and diverse enough that we really do need our own um, dedicated resources. And park rangers are trained to not only do law enforcement, but to have a background in natural resources and um, be able to be kind of not just there to look like people are getting in trouble, but to be helpful and, um, you know, be hosts of the site as well. So um, that, that proposal is moving forward next month, hopefully to be funded in, in the February timeframe. And um, so I'm hoping we can get you all out there on a uh, field trip later this spring. Um, I hesitate from, from 
from taking a lot of people out there right now because it really is beautiful space. And I don't want you to get scared off um, because the conditions that are out there now is not what we intend to be later on. Um, some of the other amenities of the open space are a parking lot and a, um, a pit toilet. So we do have some amenities out there if you're there for a while to uh, be comfortable and um, you know, have a space there that's set up and welcoming to visitors. We're working on some interpretive signs and to explain more about the, the flora and fauna of the space. And I think what else might be pertinent to your interest? There's a ton of birds out there. Um, I have noticed that um, it's, in, you know, we have some feral cats out there, which I'm not, I shouldn't even said that because I don't really want to get into feral cats. But um, when we have opened up the, uh, the canopy, the tree canopy, we are getting more raptors hunting uh, that area. And I have noticed in the last couple of years, a lot more quail out there than I ever saw before. So um, the, the restoration work is, is also doing its work on bringing back um, the more natural uh, wildlife there. The channel, will, you know, we have the big thing for fish is called shaded aquatic area. So you want to have some shade over your channel because that keeps the water uh, a little cooler, but also keeps um, greenery by there that brings um, either bugs or fish or different things like that. So uh, the channel is going to be a big attractor to both birds uh, and other wildlife because also they can access the channel a lot easier than the full on flow of the river. Um, so, Ben, we're already seeing it. So I did um, send uh, some links to some really cool video. So hopefully that can go out to the group as well as a PowerPoint that the Chico State Foundation who were the lead agency on the channel construction um, put together that has you know, more, in, more facts about the hydrology um, and, and the fish fisheries information. If that's not really my expertise, but I provided some good resources if you're interested. Um, and with that, I, I'm certainly uh, happy to answer any questions. So um, one thing, Kim, you talked about the, uh, uh, what you just spoke about with the um, uh, links to uh, the power, PowerPoint. Can you mm -hmm. maybe put, can you maybe put that in the chat? Do you have the link for that? Uh, yep, I can do that. So we do have a site. I was looking at it earlier. It needs uh, a little refreshing, but we do have a site on the city's website that um, is specific to this area. So let me find that real quick. Also, while you're looking for that, I'm going to mention that mm -hmm. um, uh, our new um, trip leader, Tim Kashuba, and I have been out to uh, Nurapan uh, just in the last few months. And there are a lot of um, uh, migrating warblers out there. Um, there's, there are a lot of birds out there. Um, the one question I, the other one question that I had was uh, looking at the original map that you showed, uh, there was a lot of parking space there, but now it looks like Dignity Health has taken most of that. Um, I did notice that there is a, a kind of a, a, a new driveway, a gravel driveway down to a smaller parking area. And that's, that's actually going to be the border, right? Because north of that entryway is what Dignity Health Properties begins now. Uh, yeah, let me go back to that map real quick. Um, oh, that's not it. So we go cl pretty close along the river to the, the bridge that goes down to um, 
that goes from the top of the Cypress Bridge. There's a stairwell that goes from the top of the Cypress Bridge to um, to the air to the open space area. Um, let's see, this is the right one. So what you can uh, let's see, make sure there it is. There it is. Okay. So add the, so you can see that this yellow kind of goldenrod dotted area is the trail alignment. So that go, starts at, there's a, um, like I said, there's a stairwell that goes from the Cypress Bridge down. So you don't have to go all the way to the intersection. You can take the stairwell down um, and then catch the trail there. And then this area that you see, I'll kind of try to blow it up a little bit. Um, in black is the um, is the driveway and parking. So, and then there is a kayak launch over here, kind of right where this L is bend is here. So, you would um, there's like a natural jetty in that area. So, it's a really good spot to get in, and then you can actually get onto the channel very easily. And um, well, I'm I'm not a, a very good kayaker, but if I was, I, I would want to get on the channel before I, you know, for me and my kayak and Anderson, probably before I figured out how to get it all done. So it's a really good way to um, get into the river. Um, and then you go, you can kayak through the channel. And many people have already done that. It's a nice, um, a nice uh, visual through there. But yeah, we have a fair amount of parking, but not a lot of parking. We, ha we have conditioned dignity in their project that their parking lot would be available for park users. But we oh, okay. don't know when that will be constructed. Okay, so that uh, outlined in black there is actually a roadway um, that goes to the parking lot, which is fairly close to the Cypress Bridge, right? And then they're also, that's where the bathrooms are located. Uh -huh. Correct? Yeah, yeah. So the bathroom is, it's actually, you can see it actually, it's in there. there's like a little blue dot kind of where there's a walkway to it. Um, right, right. So it's been there for a little bit. So it's in the aerial. But uh, so is that, is that Dignity Health area going to be eventually fenced off? Because it's not now, correct? It's not now fenced off. Right, we're talking, we're talking about a fence alignment that would go across their property um, and they would help pay for it. And then we would, and that would just be until they do their project and then we'd have to figure that out. But um, we, need, we need a reset on how and who we use as that property. And it's gonna take, it's probably the hardest transition I've had in, in park development on, um, you know, we've had, we at we, one point we've had like probably 40 to 50 people living on the property. Right, yeah. That's probably an issue that people would wanna know, uh, birders would want to know if you're gonna go out there and bird there are probably, until that fence is put up, there might be a, a lot of folks camping. I would out say, I would not. So my, I've been out there a lot and by myself um, a fair number of times. And, you know, we have members from the Conservation Corps working on the trails out there in our construction crews. We haven't had any incidents of, you know, um, you know, people attacking us or like any issues related to that. Um, but if it, if it make if it makes you uncomfortable or I mean there's people on drugs out there and there's other things. So it's just like, you know, it's not idea it's not it's not the the environment that we want. But I mean I was if you went out there in a group of two or three or four I, and you wanted to see it, I I don't you're you're gonna be fine. Well I'll have to say for myself, I've been out there several times by myself um and have no had no issues whatsoever. There are uh, there were folks living out there, but uh, they were all very cordial and there was no issues whatsoever. Um, uh, one of our, 
uh, observer Stephanie is asking if there is a proposal to have kayaks available there. Not yet, although I am uh, I'm a stand up paddle boarder and I um, I am mindful of the idea that um, it's hard to transport and store these things. Um, so I would like us to look into again we're a little further along in this transition. Um, I've seen at other facilities like kayak lockers um, where you can um, store your your gear. Um, but right now, I mean, we would certainly be open to a concessionaire if we if somebody approached us. But right now, we don't have anything uh, like that in place. But it certainly, you know, I would imagine maybe Headwaters with their new um, building on Park Marina that that might be something that they would look at. But we don't have anything um, secured yet. It looks like just really a. Uh, full of potential there. I'm just looking at your map and, and enjoying, uh, you know, the sense of flow through that you've talked about, but also the bigger bodies of water along that will give some, some quieter water. And that's just a lot of different living things can, can use those different uh, conditions. Uh, so that's, that's really good to see. Uh, well, there's always been egrets and herons. I mean, there's big birds out there every time I'm right. I'm out there. Um, so yeah, I think it's a it's also a fishing paradise for these birds because there's a lot of fish in there. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of there's I I don't know what our count is for birds up there, but I I'd expect it to be somewhere on the order of 150 species. Um, I know I've seen great horned owl. I've seen. Uh, band-tailed pigeons there. Um, there's, you know, and then all the, the my, Larry's talking about all the warblers going through all those birds, songbirds that follow the river. Uh, that's, that's great. Now, the other um, question is, and, and you have, yeah, you were going to put in, um, Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Catherine asked if you can uh, maybe show the video that you gave us with the uh, aerial uh, virtual, I mean, the aerial um, through the, the new bypass there. Yeah, let me bring... find that real quick. Yeah. yeah. Actually, both those videos that you uh, uh, sent the links to were really good. I really like the uh, the um, aerial one. The the fish the fish one was interesting also, but um, the uh, the aerial was really good. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you uh, make that full screen? Oh, Click that square down in the bottom right of the video. In the vi yeah, in the video itself. So my internet is really slow, but uh, hopefully there you go. So that bridge you see in the distance, that's the bridge on the north end. Yeah, we're going upstream here. The photographer here is John Hannon. He was uh, the biologist from BOR who was on the project. So is that gravel bar, is that something that was created? Yes. Okay. And over here, I'll show you my other one here. That's simply beautiful. 
I love that way of looking at it. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. So this is the underwater video. Can you uh, make that full screen also? Oh, you did. That's how slow my, my uh, computer is. So these are um, trout and salmon. I guess so. I'm not fully sure. <laughs> <laughs> So basically all of this uh, habitat was pretty much created uh, over the last, what, six months, a year? How long did that take? Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'd say probably just over a year. Yeah, so a lot of the trees that had to come down to create the channel, they just basically threw them in the channel. Right, it's a good uh, habitat for fish, right? Mm -hmm. I was surprised that's a lot of fish this fast. It is kind of. Kind of a lot of fish video. <laughs> while we're while we're watching the fish, does anybody else have any other questions either on Noor Pond open space or any of the other several. Um, things that Kim is involved with is the fact that she's the uh, the head honcho with the with the department there. I figured that there would be some questions about um, of course you you went over the the um, at the beginning of the video at the beginning of the presentation you kind of went over the the sale of the property uh, around Turtle Bay. I don't know if have, anybody has any questions about that. Larry, I'll have a, a couple of announcements uh, before we, we close up tonight. Um, just uh, regarding Nur Pond there, and, and Kim, you're talking about the, you know, uh, it sounds like you're saying the, the, the big challenge is dealing with the, the homeless population, transient population that's been there. And yeah, good luck with that one. I, I don't know, I don't know what to wish for, for you. Um, and uh, that, that is a challenge. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a difficult problem. I know the city is, you know, we've got some things going on. I mean, there really is just a lack of um, transitional housing and, um, you know, we're trying this new, uh, it's called like a sleeping camp or a pallet house cabin. Um, a lot of these folks, you know, they don't want to be at the mission for a variety of reasons. Um, I think the mission has loosened up on some of their, you know, religious requirements, but, um, you know, a lot of them have animals. That's a big one. So, um, you know, they're not allowed to keep their animal with them overnight at the mission. Um, and there's no kennel, no kennels there yet, although I've heard they're working on that. Um, and then some of them are, you know, they have, they have mates and partners. And so it, the mission is kind of a single sex dormitory situation. So, um, and then others just, they just, you know, some people just prefer to live that way. So, um, so these cabins we're hoping, you know, will give people their own place that they can lock their stuff up and have some security um, and that be like part of a transition, um, to other things. And then there are, um, we've got a fair amount of housing in construction right now. So, um, hopefully that there'll be, you know, they always, what I've heard several different times is of our, our homeless population, which we don't have very good counts, but it's somewhere between 700 and a thousand people that a third of them. Um, would gladly take help to be someplace else. A third of them will take some convincing and a third will refuse any help. And so I try to stay focused on the top third. A third of 700 people is still a lot of people. Um, and, you know, we live in a first world country that should have 
uh, opportunities to house people properly. So, um, you know, we continue to work on that. And, but, you know, we do have a housing crunch. Even we have, I was talking to our housing uh, folks and we have about 70 people that do have vouchers um, for subsidized housing that can't find apartments to rent. Um, so, you know, I probably sort of with the, the great recession and then the car and um, campfires, we had a lot of people move into town. Um, so our just, our overall vacancy rate is very, very low right now. So it's gonna take some new construction. Um, this is also pushing for this, um, they're called um, uh, accessory dwelling units. So if you live on a house that there's a room to put a smaller um, unit, so they just call them like in-law units or granny units, those sort of things. Um, now that there's like literally no restrictions on that. So you can add one of those to your property to either house, you know, a family member that may need housing or, um, or you can rent it out. And there's, if you want to rent one out and the city now has, um, we've actually had architects design them that are pre-approved and ready to go. Um, you can be part of the solution as well. Um, so there's a number of strategies going on right now. There is a ton of money coming down from the state in the next couple of years that Governor Newsom put a lot of money in the budget for uh, housing. So we're hoping that um, our, our affordable housing partners um, will keep, keep building because we need it. Is that, uh, is that need for affordable housing uh, is it reasonable to expect that that will be a uh, a factor uh, in in moving forward with the sale of that land, say up around the rodeo grounds? Mm, you know, at one point somebody talked about including some housing in that proposal. I don't know if. Um, you know, at the end of the day, with all the things that, you know, people want to do up there, I don't, there's only so much real estate. So I don't know whether that's feasible or not. Um, so, so is that, is that legislation or regulation? I'm not sure if from 2019, Barry mm -hmm. DeWalt talked about it. Um, is that not a mandatory, you've got to do so much when you sell surplus land? You have you to do offer it for that purpose. Um, okay. But okay. then they have to be able to move fairly quickly and have a project. And it, it seems unlikely that that would be feasible. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, I don't think so. I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on the board at Northern Valley Catholic Social Service, and I've been kind of, you know, pushing our group to look at maybe picking up the Habitat for Humanity Charter now that that's lapsed. Or, you know, we have a lot of good older housing stock that, you know, we need to make sure that's really our affordable housing, honestly, is some of our older housing stock. And so keeping that livable and um, energy efficient and those sort of things, I think is, uh, needs to be a higher priority. Yeah. Well, were good luck put, with that. <laughs> Kim, were you going to put in the, uh, the link to tonight's uh, meeting? that they had uh, on into the chat. Yeah, let me see if they have posted it yet. Just a second. Is it probably, is it maybe still going on or? I don't know. It was, uh, I left during the presentation and there was still some public comment to happen. So it's, it's possible that they're still out there, but um, yeah, they haven't posted the video yet. So I can send it to you in the morning. Um, so that link that's up there right now, that uh, was just up there at the top of your, yeah, can you put that link in the? Oh, you know what? I was looking at the wrong agenda. Let me see. Maybe it is. I also had a community, a parks commission meeting today, so I'm getting all my, <laughs> all my meetings in. Yeah, there, there is, uh, it is a very, <laughs> there's a very complex space I noticed when I was trying to find uh, the live stream and the, the video, the post video. 
Okay, so yeah, they haven't posted the video yet. Um, okay, so the so the uh, link that is right now in your um, at the in your cursor in your top page the, for the whole page that's up let in the me top see if I, yeah let me see if we can pull the november i don't think i think you got it well you could yeah you could use this one yeah and then what you do is when you go to this page then you go up to meeting videos and like right now it says in progress so okay, i guess we so, can see if we, yep, they're still talking okay <laughs> so yeah put that link So that's a live stream link there, right? Yeah, I'll I'll put this. Yeah. Yeah, put yeah put that link in there. That ID for yeah, put that link in our chat. Okay. And then people can find it from there. Because I I got I got lost when I went into the all that city videos mm -hmm. and stuff. It's a lot. It's a lot. Could you? Could you remind us of the next steps? There's one more special meeting. And what what kind of timing do you anticipate after that? Yeah, so the next meeting will be sort of the, uh, I mean, why it's set up for them to make some sort of decision whether they you know ask for more information or um you know uh i mean it's very likely it's a big decision it's very likely they could ask for more decision i mean more information um so then the next part will be like this is you know these are your these are the options in front of us um you know which i which it seems to me like i mentioned before and i think it's either you know, go ahead and move forward with um, the, you know, the unsolicited offer as, and negotiate that. And then, or uh, say we, um, we want to go out to bid for the city to do its own master plan or do nothing or study it more or something like that. So I think likely it'll come down to either, you know, move forward with this group to have them do the master, you know, them facilitate the master planning. So whether, whoever facilitates the master planning, the intention is still to be very inclusive and get a, a broad swath of the community engaged in the conversation, but then also do a deeper dive on all these constraints around, you know, grant deeds and things like that. Hmm. So it could move, it could move fairly quickly. Catherine, the, the, the next meeting uh, workshop they're calling them is uh, the 18th, November 18th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. next week. So, you know, one way that is, um, I think, effective in communicating with the council is via email. So if you send something to city council at cityofreading.org, it gets distributed to all five of them, um, as well as the city manager and if a particular department is involved. And they do read that. I mean, I would say don't send them the afternoon of the meeting. That happens a lot. And a lot of times they never see them before the meeting. Um, but if you send it, you know, a few days before or a week before, um, they read it. And I've had them say like, oh, I got a lot of emails on that. And I'm like, well, I got the same emails and I got like four emails. So, I mean, four or five emails that say the same thing can actually have a pretty, um, pretty good influence or impact on them. So, and I think they appreciate this as a, you know, an intelligent, thoughtful group. I think, you know, they get a lot of people calling them names and saying stupid things. So to have, <laughs> you know, people that, you know, think things clearly and articulate in a courteous and professional voice, I think you, you get listened to. I would just like to make a comment. This is Shelley Sarasaro. And I hope that other committees like the Plant Society and David Ledger and those leaders will also uh, take up this cause because 
This is a beautiful piece of wilderness in untouched, uh, you know, it complements Redding and there's no reason that it should be developed. And for some outsider to come in and say, yeah, you know, we're gonna make an unsolicited uh, offer on this property and we're gonna, you know, develop the hell out of it and make a buck off of it is, it's not tolerable. It is absolutely outlandish. And I live in Siskiyou County, you know, I could probably write a letter. I lived in Reading for 45 years. I, you know, I'm up here in Mount Shasta and I'll tell you, it, they don't let anything like this go by. I mean, they chew it up and spit it out like a junkyard dog. And that's well, the attitude. Yeah. Well, let me assure you, I think that there is uh, little to no chance that the floodplain area gets developed. And that is the area that I think you're most concerned about. So that is- I'm concerned about it. I mean, just like you said in the beginning, Kim, with all due respect, that little by little, pieces and parcels of this beautiful riverfront is getting developed. And I mean, what you presented tonight is absolutely glorious and appreciated. And I'm astounded by how wonderful it is. And I'm going to make sure I get to see it. But when does it stop? When do the little pieces stop getting developed and, you know, the money going into the deep pockets of the people that really don't give a rip about wildlife. So uh, that's all I'm going to say, but um, whatever, uh, you know, people can tell me that I can do besides write a letter, you know. Well, I would I, say, I'll let you know, David Ledger has been present uh, at all the workshops and he has, uh, he has uh, spoke uh, at the dais um, leveling his concerns and there was another woman that I didn't I didn't know her but she also spoke very eloquently at the last meeting um, so I, th I think they're aware of that the good news is for the most part that regulation is is on your side so um, like I said I think that the areas that are really under discussion right now uh, are the convention center um, Ground, the civic auditorium and the grounds around that. And I've lost you. Uh, oh, I don't know if you can hear me. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So the, really what's under discussion for development are the, the civic auditorium and the grounds around that, uh, the Reading Rodeo Arena and, um, you know, potentially, you know, we've had conversations before with uh, Maurice Johannesson and he and his wife Marianne on the the roller rink skate um, thing there and uh, I don't know if you've been there lately but not much has happened different there in about 40 years so you know there is there is some potential and, and honestly I hear from people all the time that like go to Bend or go to other places and they're like you know why can't we do something better with our riverfront and make it really an attraction. And so the convention center is 50 years old. The roller rink's probably close to that. Uh, the rodeo arena, I think it's underutilized, but has potential. So I think it's, I think it's okay to be thinking, you know, what do we want the next, next phase of that area to look like? And I think the good news is that my department and others have gotten a lot of grants over the years that have funded work that take a lot of that real estate that I think you're most concerned about off the table. Um, you know, a couple of thoughts here. First, Shelly, uh, also, um, you know, the chapter, the Audubon chapter, uh, Bruce did compose a letter and send that in. Um, and, and in addition to David, through uh, his various connections working on it, I know that the uh, the North State Climate Action Group is is moving to address this. Also, we're a, a little half a step or two behind uh, behind the business community, I think, but getting there. Um, and uh, Kim, you know, just a, a thought for you. Um, uh, you know, I think we, I think the concern. You, I think you're right to maybe consider the 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 bird sanctuary, the heart of the thing, but. Uh, but it, it, it does function as a, the river functions as a corridor. And so a real concern is not just that piece of property, but mostly the, the integrity of the riparian forest. And it's already really thin there at the rodeo grounds. Um, 
but uh, but um, you know, I'd love to see that uh, a setback that would actually increase that uh, that riparian depth there, that riparian forest I don't, depth. I don't know if you've been out there recently, but you know, we did get a grant that we moved that road that used to wrap around the trees. Uh, the tree and we moved we took that road out and we moved it up on top of the bluff and we did restore the planting so there's some baby trees uh growing there now but uh, that's great yeah that's so great we, to hear. We did accomplish that and so really that whole setback um is now protected that's great to hear okay and it is protected even if it were sold for development yeah great to hear Great to hear. All right. Kim, are there any other areas that the city owns along along the Sacramento River um, that we may not be aware of that could be in the future turned into a property like the Newer Pond mm -hmm. property? Yeah, I have two more on my to-do list. Um, one um, is called Riverland Drive, but we renamed that to Kumbai Shrill, which is also a Wintu name for Shady Oak Village. Um, and that is, uh, we rent, lease a lot of that to Bud Hancock um, for agricultural purposes, but it's got that blit, big blue geosphere sort of thing that you can see it off of the freeway. Right. Um, it's in Churn Creek Bottom, so the agricultural soils there are, are really good, but um, we got a grant and it should go to construction probably later next year to formalize a trailhead there um, right off um, Knighton Road and off um, Riverland Drive. And then, um, and actually, I'll, I think I'm kind of excited about this, is also a farm stand for buds so that uh, they'll be able to actually sell um, some of the, they have a number of fruit trees and other things down there. So they, they'd have kind of a storefront for that, uh, as well as a bathroom. And then the trail um, will go uh, kind of to the south end of the property, then to the river. And then the trail goes all the way. Um, BLM has a large parcel there um, that's amazing. Um, I want to think it's like 80 acres and it's they call it the um, Shea Island property. Um, and so basically we got this grant, it's called the Federal Lands Access Program because there was no other, act. their property is totally like land, there's no public access to it. Um, so this gets you to their property. And so we own, there's some big, big houses there, um, but the city owns the property um, between the river and the houses. And there's an established trail there that will get paved um, when we finish this project. Um, so that's a great spot. And the good news is we have a grant from the federal government that protects all of that for like 50 years. And then the other one is, um, we call it Capusta, and that is on the west side of the river off Latona Road. And Latona is where the Jolly Giant flea market is, <clears throat> it's just a landmark. Mm -hmm. So you just drive straight back. Um, it also was a, a gravel mining um, location. And it's, yeah, it's a bit neglected and kind of, it still looks like a gravel mining off. There's just, you know, mounds of river cobbles. So you want to do a landscaping project, you have my permission to go out there and grab some rocks. Um, so that would be, and so we are talking to BOR about a fish channel project on that property. Um, and we're also talking to them about one off of Gervan Road near our Cascade Park uh, location. So they, they're finding the fish channels are extremely effective um, in getting our salmon catch count up. Um, and so they're pouring a fair amount of cash into that um and where we can accommodate it we think it's a good idea yeah our uh, thank you kim that's good to hear yeah kim so this is larry again uh so our uh, organization is is uh very aware of capusta that's one of our our prime birding areas and then the okay. one you and the one you spoke of before that um the one that's well, by the we, we, by the geodesic dome yeah 
uh -huh. is there still a gate there that you have that you have to, that is locked until a certain time in the morning mm -hmm. to go in there because that's another great birding area as a matter yeah, of fact you should be able you should be able to drive in and park kind of off of the road and then there is a gate that goes back to the agricultural um so we did move the gate i don't know how long it's been since you've been there but the gate got moved so that you could park off of the road and then instead of accessing you used to like drive down the road to access the river now you actually access it by going south and going around but it's but it's it's pretty obvious when you get down there it's it's getting worn in okay yeah because i haven't and been there larry yeah i haven't been there in a few years but a friend of mine uh there's a i don't know how many homes are in there but there's at least i think maybe a half a dozen a friend of mine just built a huge house in there. So all those, um, so the the trail around there goes in between those home properties and the river. Is that correct? There's still a trail that That's goes correct. goes all along the riverfront there. Yes. In fact, a few years ago, I actually called the realtors and said, "You can't put riverfront property in those advertisements because." They aren't riverfront, they're river view. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yes. We've had a good relationship with the the people at the inn that have been there for a long time, the Bryants. Um, and I do know that there's I've seen one other house in there. To be honest with you, I haven't driven, I haven't been quite down there in a probably a year or so. So there might be some others now. But yeah, we have full title ownership of it's like 50 feet between the river's edge and and the homes. Oh, great. So there is a, so they move the gate back and there is a parking area and then you can access that via the trail along the Sacramento River. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And, and and Larry, yeah, and if you and Tim are, want to work anything up in that vein, I know you'd want to work with Kim and, and also Bud Hancock, who runs the... Uh, the organic garden there he'd love to to open that up to uh to audubon uh he, he'd be helpful on that too. yeah make sure you have plenty of time uh, <laughs> is he a talker <laughs> <laughs> yeah he is he'll have all kinds of ideas for you um, he's a good soul he is a very good soul he but he's a talker he is um yeah Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a, a moment here to just a couple other notes on uh, and, and not they're not in in line with the sale or anything like that. But Turtle Bay things just for an Audubon announcement. Two two things here. One, Mike Warren running the the museum there has agreed to uh, to uh, and this is largely David Ledger's lead on this uh, making it happen. But uh, Mike has agreed to close down the uh, the feral cat, the, the fat cat feeding station there, and and remove the remaining cats, which are new cats past the, uh, you know that that appeared after his his effort to uh, to get to zero cats by allowing no new cats. So all the old cats are gone, uh, as best we can determine, and uh, and just new ones are there. So he he has. Uh, he said that he will shut that down. So that's one thing. And also, um, with the uh, the the bird blind that uh, was kind of a, a joint operation between Wintu Audubon and Shiba, the uh, the charter school, and uh, and Turtle Bay. That bird blind is now built, uh, and so it's there. And and uh, and so we'll be working up uh, ways for various groups to use it uh and that's that's in that land kim was mentioning it's on it's in the turtle bay lease part of the land um but it's in that uh floodplain just just below the museum um so uh there are a couple things going on in that area also just want to let people know okay.